from somewhere. Yes. Yes. I'm George. George McFly. I'm your density. I mean, your destiny. Today I want to talk about what is density, okay? We want to talk about um, the definition of density and how do we calculate density. Um, open up your packet um, to this page right here, okay? That page, we're going to go through these and talk about density and what it looks like. Um, the first part of this, we're going to take a look at those liquids, okay? We, at home, we did a little... Um, experiment when you put liquids into a container and you level those three liquids you could see which one of those was the most dense now I did an example for this uh, where is it? so I kind of sent this I sent this um, to you guys before you left the other day but here's my container we look at my container, my container contained about seven different things. We had uh, mineral spirits, we had uh, baby oil, we had uh, rubbing alcohol, we had water, we had soy sauce, we had soap. Um, some of them didn't all combine, but you can see there's about four levels there. There's about four little containers there. You can see how those, the, the density kind of changes on how those are set. So you take a look at number one, we have Liquid A up top, liquid B in the middle, and liquid C on the bottom. If you were to look at those liquids, you would say label those from most dense to least dense. Well, this is going to be the least dense. Okay? The one that sits on the top is the least dense. It floats. One thing you'll learn about water is water is um, 1.0 grams per milliliter. So anything that is less than that is going to float. Anything that's heavier than one gram per milliliter is going to sink. So if we said that this is water here, okay, and anything that's lighter than water in, in regards to density is going to be our least dense. Anything that's heavier than water would be more dense, okay? Um, a good example of this, is like you see oil tankers, when oil tankers um, explode or they crash in the ocean, you'll see that the, uh, the oil floats on top of the water, okay, on top of the water. And the reason that is, is because the oil is less dense than the water. So when we go through and try to um, grab all that stuff, take all that oil, it's kind of easier because it's separated. Um, kind of like our jar there, you'd separate those. Um, but the big thing I want to talk about today is how do I calculate density? Okay. Density, and what is density? Well, density is a property of matter, and an easy way for you to calculate density is to remember this. I love, or I heart, density. And the reason why you can remember this makes life easier is that if we draw a line right here, this is mass and this is volume. 
So I, mass divided by volume, density. So I heart density. Okay, I heart density. So mass divided by volume. That's an easy way for you to remember how to calculate density. I heart density. Mass divided by volume. All right? Now remember, density is a property of matter. So depending on um, the item, the density may change. Now the density is going to be the same if the item is the same. So for example, the density of this whiteboard marker is the same throughout all whiteboard markers. So if I have a quartz crystal, the quartz crystal is going to be the same, same density as any other quartz crystal. That's how it's a property of matter. That's how we know we can identify things. Another example, I talked about um, pyrite and gold, when you're talking about mass, how you can compare pyrite and you can compare gold. And if they, you know, pyrite is less dense than gold. So they look the same, but they're not. Okay, it's kind of like these two, these two clear liquids. Okay, these two clear liquids in this container. They look the same, but they're not. And the reason why we can, you know, we can um, decide that or uh, figure that out is because they are less dense, okay? Scientists use density to identify different objects. Um, you probably, in your last couple of years of science, you've talked about different things that you can identify things. Like you have, um, your, you use your, your um, observations to see things. So it's clear, um, texture, color, hardness, these things. And density would be also be a property of matter. Now, you have to remember, that's why we taught you mass first, how to find mass of something and how to find volume of something. So if I had like a rock, I would find the mass of it on a triple beam balance and then I'd find the volume of it. Now I couldn't go length times width times height, I'd have to drop it in a graduated cylinder and find that out. All right, so that is the big idea of density. Okay, density is a property of matter. It's about how packed, how dense the matter is in that object. This next part, let's calculate density. We talked about the formula for density. The formula for density is mass divided by volume. So mass divided by volume. So if you take a look in your packets, this is problem number three. We have mass divided by volume. Now I'm going to write this out for you. So remember, we have our heart. So this represents the mass, and this represents the volume. So mass divided by volume. So if we go mass divided by volume, so that'd be five divided by ten. And five divided by ten would be 0.5. So 0.5 grams per milliliter. So half a gram per milliliter. So every one milliliter volume would represent half a gram. It, weighed, it would have a mass of half a gram. The amount of matter inside that object is a half a gram. We take a look at the density for this next one. Same thing. Mass divided by volume. 12.2 divided by 6.1, all right? So my density would be two grams per milliliter. And we wanna put our labels here just to make sure. So two grams per milliliter. I want you to go down and do C and D. I did A and B for you. You guys go down and do C and B and answer question number four. Okay, do that now. Okay, the next piece now, now that we know how to calculate density, if we have mass and volume, is if we have a different variables, how do we calculate it from different variables? So if you look at problem number five now, it says calculate the following mass, and you already know the density. You already know the density, sorry. Okay, so now, I have this little mathematical triangle that you should write in your notes packets. Mass divided by volume equals density.
density. Density times volume equals mass. Mass times density equals volume. Okay, so it's kind of a workaround for that triangle. Okay, so write, write this triangle in here. It goes mass times density equals volume, and so on and so forth. So go ahead and um, write this triangle in your packet. And that will help you work through your problems. Um, if we take a look at 5A, okay, we have a volume of 40 milliliters. Now remember, I should be able to tell what the volume is by looking at the label. If I look at this label, it says milliliters, I should know that it's volume because milliliters is volume. If I look at my density and it's grams per milliliter, I should know that that's grams per milliliter by its label. Okay, that was what we just tested on. So we're looking for the grams. So what divided by 40 equals four? Okay, something divided by 40 equals four. We go over to our triangle here, we have our volume, and we have our density. So 40 times 4 equals 160. So I know that my mass then is going to be 160. I remember how we label mass. Mass is labeled 160 grams. Okay, it's labeled as 160 grams. All right, you go on and try number B, or letter B, using the um, triangle from that we used on this next one. So find the mass of that next triangle. All right, when you do question number six, I want you to look closely um, and notice, um, depending on the mass and the volumes, what do you see? What is the relationship for that? Okay, go over that with your teacher. She, uh, he or she should know how to look at that relationship and why that is changing. Um, let's take a look at number seven. I do have to make a correction to my triangle. I put the wrong thing here. It's mass divided by density equals volume. So it's not times, it's mass divided by density equals volume. Um, that was a mistake by me, um, and I'll explain why here in just a second. So if we take a look at number 7A, um, 7A, our density is 12 grams per milliliter, and my mass is a half a gram. So I have a half a gram with a density of 12 grams per milliliter. So if I set up my formula, remember, I heart density, so mass divided by volume equals density. Well, our mass would be 0.5 grams. We're looking for our milliliters, which is grams per milliliter. So I used to think, I, when I had talked about the triangle before, I thought it was times, but it really doesn't make sense. Uh, 0.5 times that would be 6. Well, 0.5 divided by 6, that doesn't give us the right, it doesn't give us 12. So what we have to do here is we have to go mass divided by density. So mass divided by density. That's what you'll get for your answer there. And it comes out to be like, 0 0.04 and some change. Okay, 0 0.04 and some change. I think that's what it came out to be. Uh, let's see. We should have gone 0 0.5 divided by 12 equals 0 0.04167. Okay, 0 0.04167. Now the way I could check my answer here is if I go 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.04167. I should get 12. 0. 0.5 divided by 0. 0.04167 equals 12. It's almost 12. It's really like the, the uh, calculator kind of rounds it off. So it's pretty close to 12. All right, that is your brief overview on density. Make sure you remember the formula density is I heart density, mass divided by volume.